Moving on to agenda item 8.0. This is the report of the nursing practice committee. And this is Elizabeth Woods. Yes. Item 8.0 before the nursing practice committee. Now, in the table of contents, you'll see that there's going to be a discussion and possible action regarding the continuation and the role of nursing education workforce advisory committee. And um, uh, Lori, are you going to be doing that? Is, are you the one that's going to be talking about that? I will. I will be presenting um, for this board meeting. We may end up with a new liaison for practice committee come the first of the year, um, but uh, currently I'm filling in for that. So, um, may, with I, the... I say, uh, may I just say before we go on that uh, I was informed that Jeanette, Jeanette Wackerly the supervising nursing education consultant is retiring from the board after 31 years of service. And uh, it's been my pleasure to have worked with her for the eight years and uh, just greatly respect her integrity, her knowledge of nursing education and nursing practice. And I wish her the best of luck going on to whatever she's going to do, her various adventures, but uh, it, uh, we'll be missing her. Yes, definitely. We, we all miss her. She was a wealth of knowledge and we truly did lose um, an amazing historian um, within our board. Her um, official last day was, um, a, uh, I believe, a week or two ago. Um, she has uh, not yet been enjoying her retirement as she was, <clears throat> excuse me, wrapping up loose ends. Um, and she did bring and return all of her equipment officially yesterday. So she, um, she showed up at the office and she let us know that she was done. Um, uh, she has dedicated uh, her life to the Board of Registered Nursing, to the advancement of nursing practice, um, and is truly just knowledgeable in all aspects of um, scope of practice and nursing in California. And um, we miss her already, and we've, we're very, very grateful for her service. Thank okay. You. Can we That's go on rare. then? Um, Lori, you're going to be updating us on this, uh, what's happening here. Yeah, definitely. So pursuant um, to uh, the business and profession code um, 2710.5, um, where it says that the board is authorized under BPC um, to appoint advisory committees with permission of the director of DCA as needed to advise the board on nursing matters. So what we have to do now is on an annual basis, we are bringing the non statutory advisory committees forward for review um, to ensure 1 that they're still as needed. 2 um, to ensure that the um, committee membership is uh, where we would like it to be and that there is adequate direction from the board for them to carry out the mission of the board. And so, um, with nursing education workforce advisory committee, that was a um, combination of 2 committees that had previously been in practice and that's the education advisory committee and then the nursing workforce advisory committee. And in 2015, they were combined after the legislator um, had some input on that and really kind of specified that education prepares for practice and practice needs to provide feedback back to education so that education can continue to prepare for practice. We do know um, by reading several white papers and research um, process research papers out there that um, there is a theory practice gap. Um, we're working hard within looking at our education standards and working with our deans and directors and working through um, the approval process of our pre licensed schools and um, the continuing approval visits and curriculum changes, et cetera, to really kind of shrink that gap and have our nurses, nursing students be adequately prepared to go into practice. Um, there is some research out there that shows that within the first two years of graduating from nursing school that we lose about 33% of the nurses. And so it's really important for us to have this committee to continue to work together to get education, to have feedback from practice, to have practice had feedback from education. As um, I'm sure you guys are aware, 
when, once the nursing student has been educated, they do their clinicals concurrent with their theory practice in a healthcare facility. So again, that's education working with workforce. And then when they graduate and are licensed, they usually go into a training program, um, which is again, education offered by the healthcare facility in a new grad program of some sort. So that feedback is um, very important. We also contract with um, UCSF at this point to carry out research based on um, the uh, statutory requirement that the BRN do this. And we do that research um, every other year for workforce and annually for our education, our academic partners. And um, we want that research to be current and we want it to be useful. And so our research, our data people are involved in this committee as well, and they take feedback from that group. And so currently, NEWAC meets two times a year, typically in the spring and the fall. However, I do want to make sure that the board is aware that NEWAC committee has not met during the pandemic. The key members of this group have been working diligently, getting their um, workforce in alignment with COVID, as well as um, getting their academic institutions in alignment with COVID so that they can progress and graduate the students. So um, we're, we're ready. We're hearing that they're ready as well to come back and start meetings. And we would like to reinitiate those meetings um, in this next year. The one thing that did come out is that um, the current member structure and there is a separate agenda item uh, in materials for that that talks about agenda item 8.8 NEWAC membership structure. It's on our website. The current membership structure has 27 to 29 total members. As you guys know, you have to have a majority of them present to meet um, to make a quorum so that you can hold a meeting minute meeting. Feedback from the members within the um, NEWAC committee said that it has been difficult to get anything through that committee because of the robust amount of people in there. Um, that the, the saying that pops in my mind is something that my mom always said to me and that says when there's too many cooks in the kitchen, they, they get in each other's way. So I would love to foster a very collaborative um, uh, group and I would actually request that our board look at this suggested meeting membership structure um, where there's a current one on the left and suggested on the right. It does require that the members be appointed by the board um, and that it does change the membership from almost 30 people down to half of that with 15 people. It does allow for an equal distribution between three education representatives, three employee representatives, three nursing workforce representatives, three data, two union representatives, and one public member. And um, so that is my report. I'm here for questions. Um, and uh, if you have anything that you need from me, just let me know. Who was the, uh, who's the BRN member who was going in the past? The liaison for this group in the past has been Katie Doherty. Um, no, it says a BRN board member. I don't know that there was ever a board member specifically assigned. Um, on our website, I looked at the current membership and I did not see that there was a board member assigned. Um, so even though that this was the suggested structure that may not have been what was actually put into place. So right now we do have Je Jeanette Wackerly as the um, uh, ex officio member. Um, as you mentioned, she has retired. Katie Doherty served as a liaison, um, but we had representatives from California State University, Sacramento, California Hospital Association, North Health Impact, Samuel Merritt, Kaiser Permanente National Patient Care Services, UNAC, UHCP, Community Colleges, Chancellor's Office, UCLA School of Nursing Health Center at the Union Rescue Mission, Sutter Cancer Center, American Nursing Association, California, California State University, Long Beach, SCIU, California Nursing Association, National Nurses United, 
University of California, San Francisco, Association of California Nurse Leaders, Assessment Technologies Institute, West Coast University, Health Professions Education Foundation, OSHPED, Fresno City College, Philip R. Lee Institutes of Health Policy Studies at UCSF, Work Health Workforce Development Division of OSHPED, Mount San Jacinto College, and then, like I said, the ex officio member, which was Jeanette Wackerly. So that is the current structure. And just to keep in mind, they have not met for, um, I can speak to the last almost two years. So um, we would like to get something established and something move forward. So I appreciate your consideration. Who's the research vendor? Currently, the research vendor is UCSD. We did um, continue that contract in June per the California State Auditor's recommendation, and that is extended for an additional three years. You said the research vendor was UCSC? It's Joanne Spetz at UCSF. Oh, F. So. They have yeah. been our research vendor for many years. Um, so, how would we start this process? We would need a list. Each board member would need a list of the members. We'd have to determine who we want to stay on this committee. Well, we could, what well, we would start today is to make a motion to continue the NEWAC, um, to continue to be held two times a year um, with the goal for one in spring and one in fall, um, continue to have the focus in nursing education and workforce, um, and you could consider changing the membership from the 27 to 29 to the recommendation uh, 15. And then based on that, um, we can get that process started and then we could, um, you could vote to set up a two person committee, very similar to what we did for the NPAC and NMAC. Um, and we can look at who is currently here and if they want to continue, we can absolutely continue for the duration of the term that they've already been appointed in. Or um, we could start a new um, recruitment and um, have that voted on and, and um, appointed by the board, very similar to what we did with that nurse midwife advisory committee where we started fresh, got them up and going with a new, um, a new focus and a new um, directive to really carry out the mission of the board. Not to say that they haven't been doing that in the past, they absolutely have, um, but that's the, that is an option that you guys could consider um, and move forward that way. Well, it certainly would be nice, to, uh, you hear me? It certainly would be nice to hear from the members of the committee I mean, maybe there are people who want to stay, people who don't want to stay. I'd like to know from the committee what the positions we can... are necessary and one's not. Instead, instead of trying to hack them out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and we could make that as uh, an offer that if they do want to continue to let us know. Um, and we, if we have that position still available, if that's one of those that were there, or they could fit into a position that they qualify for and they want to stay, we can absolutely carry them over. Um, and then we can make a listing for you to whoever comes in that two person subcommittee, if you, that's the route that you choose. We can make a listing of the members that are interested in staying and the members that um, are not interested in staying and any positions that are still remaining and we can do an outreach, a call to action and take in applications and go through that review process. So, so is this committee going to be meeting anytime soon or no? So in, um, in the nature of speaking to what we're kind of familiar with, we did start this process last fall with the nurse practitioner advisory committee and the nurse midwife committee, and we were able to have their first meetings in April of that following year. And that would be something that we could do. We could have a meeting in spring of this next year. And so our goal could be that we would um, uh, find out who wants to stay and what positions we have open, get that process going, 
have the board appoint and then um, have our first meeting in the beginning of 2022. So as the committee stands now, there's not a, there's not gonna be a meeting of the committee the way it is now. Is that my understanding? Or is there gonna be some type of a Zoom meeting or something where people can participate? There, there has not been any meeting scheduled to date. Um, if you choose to continue the meeting structure the way that it is now, not change the membership, we absolutely can schedule a meeting for the beginning of this next year um, and a one in the fall as well per the charter where they meet twice a year. Um, I just wanted to put that caution out to you that having a committee with 27 to 29 members um, has been something that was of a concern by our DCA director. There's a lot of staff time and a lot of funds that go into that. There are um, issues around that as well. So um, in order for me to present this to our director, I would have a recommendation that we do look at the membership and we do try to decrease that. Additionally, it is easier to establish a quorum. Well, the, the membership would be getting an email or something to update them that is maybe changing. I hate making changes about things without the people who are on the committee to start with know about it. Sometimes that happens. So how would the, I guess my question is, how are the people who are already on these, this committee, the 27 or 29 people, how are they gonna be consulted about possibly changes in the committee, particularly change of membership? So this is a public document. It is noticed on our website. Um, it does go out to the listserv. Um, I, I can tell you that BJ Bartleson's been in our public comments already today. Um, I can tell you, I believe I heard uh, Kathy Hughes. Um, I know that um, Joanne Spetz is aware of this. Jeanette is off. And so um, most of these people that are part of this committee are very, very active within the California Board of Nursing. They participate in our public comments. They are on our listserv. They get notice of these agenda items and um, they are made aware with the public that these are the, the things that are changing. Additionally, I attend many, many um, advisory committees um, and I talk about the things that will be coming up on board agendas and will be reviewed. And I have said in many, many meetings that we are reviewing all of our committees that are non statutory. I made mention of this in the APRN committee, as well as the last board meeting where we talked about APRN committee um, to ensure that when we were talking about the APRN committee, that everybody was aware that we were reviewing all of our committees that are not currently in statute. The committees that are in statute right now are NPAC and NMAC. The APRN and NUAC are not in statute. And so we did review APRN. Um, I did state at the board meeting, the last one, that it would be in our meeting minutes as well. It would be on the webcast. It is out in um, our uh, agenda as well. And we um, also talked about it in the APRN committee that was just held uh, this last month when they had an agenda item on advisory committees. So um, it is something that has been talked about at length um, that has been shared out to the public and um, people are aware that these changes and evaluations are, are out there. Okay. And we can, once the board votes, send out an official notice. Um, I have no problem with doing that. Um, that is what we did with NPAC and NMAC where we sent out official notices to every single um, nurse midwife in California. We also sent out official notice to every single nurse practitioner in California. And um, we could send this out as well through our listserv um, to the people that subscribe to that. If you want to make it a larger, we can target specific groups. Um, I, I await your feedback. Well, I think it seems to be too many people on this committee. And of course, they're not all coming together for one meeting. Uh, but we're not changing, we're only talking about changing the makeup of the meeting, the membership. We're not talking about changing 
the, the two goal, the goals, the purpose, any of that. It's just the membership that we're looking at. Does that what I understand? You, you could change it if you choose to. My recommendation is to keep it as it is, but change the membership. Um, this was a recommendation from the legislators and it has been shown to be very beneficial both to education and to workforce. In um, complete transparency, I did receive a letter. I could not find it in time to be posted in the meeting materials. I did receive a copy of it probably about um, three weeks ago to a month ago where um, there was a request made to legislative staff and that legislative staff shared it with me and I can't find it, I apologize, where the request was to separate again. Um, I don't see how separating the group would behoove anybody. Um, we, we absolutely structure our nursing curriculum to meet the needs of workforce and we need workforce to provide academia the input kind of as a, a checks and balances quality assurance to ensure that we're always producing students to be safe practitioners and to really fill the need within the workforce. I don't see a reason for changing it, but uh, making it smaller probably would, would be helpful. So I can make a, what shall I say, we're keeping it the same way if we're going to be looked at the possibility of having less members. And in order to do that, an email or something will have to go out to them to see if there are people who would just like to drop off the committee for one reason or another. And what members do we really need and what ones we don't. Does that make sense? Absolutely does and we can do that. Um, Betty, I did have one um, question of clarification mm -hmm. on the previous um, nurse education workforce advisory committee. The board's executive officer did the appointing. In this um, proposal on um, the, the meeting materials, it is for the board to do the appointing. Did you want to keep with the EO doing the appointment of the members or did you want to move it to a board um, membership appointment process? Well, if it's worked all right the way it's been, I don't see any reason why we should change it. Okay, so if you want to decrease the membership um, continue the charter as is and continue with EO appointing the membership. That could be the motion that you make here. All right. I will make that, but still it hasn't been decided exactly what members that's to be decided. We're not making a particular number. It has to be 15 or 14 or whatever. It's, it's up to kind of the existing members of the committee right now to sort of work that out to some extent. I, I, so I, I would need more information on how you imagine that working. Um, what my thought was is that we set the number, the membership number at 15 with this equal distribution of three education, three employee, three workforce, three data, two union and one public. And then we look at the memberships of the people that are currently in those roles and see if they want to continue. You can see old on the left, which is the current, and the suggested on the right, and you could see that education was taken into consideration, workforce was taken into consideration, public was taken into consideration, et cetera, so that each one of the um, types still received complete representation. Uh, and so if you're comfortable with that, it would be best for us to make sure that there's an equal representation. What I would not want to see is that there be more education and less workforce, or more um, employers and less data, because we really do need um, that equitable um, communication and representation. You need the input from all of them. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Anybody else have any? Uh, no, I'm okay maybe? with that too. Are you making the motion, Betty? Yes, Okay. <laughs> making the motion. All right. <laughs> Uh, so just double checking. Um, and I, I would second you. So just for clarification, the motion is to continue NEWAC with the uh, original focus and charter to meet right. twice a year, one in spring, one in fall, decrease the membership to the 15 outlined on this chart, 
and um, instead of having board appointing, have the EO continue to appoint, and then we will check with current membership if they are wanting to continue in the role that they currently fill. Yes. Okay, thank you. And so we have Betty as a first making the motion, Dolores second. Dolores, you wanna go out to public comment? Bear and moderator, can we please open to public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box. I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. BJ would like to make a comment. One second, please. Go ahead, BJ. Reader, um, BJ Bartelson, Vice President for Nursing and Clinical Services at the California Hospital Association and a um, member of the NEWAC committee. Um, very glad to hear that this committee is getting back up and running again um, with the threat of it going away it was very concerning. Uh, as you can imagine, this is a very, very important time that we keep workforce and academia together um, to deal with the upcoming issues with workforce, um, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you for uh, doing that. I also agree that a smaller number is probably more practical. Um, however, I am very concerned with the suggested membership and the um, deletion, if you will, of the most important member that should be there, and that's health impact. Um, talking workforce has to have our state workforce center front and center in this group. Um, so I would suggest that um, that be a member in itself. I mean, that they really need to be there. I also suggest that the professional nursing organizations like CHA that have been present are also continuing there um, along with bedside nurses because we need both bedside nursing input, but we also need policy groups, professional organizations such as ACNL, ANA, Health Impact, and CHA to assist with policy making as we move forward. So again, agree with the, the decreasing number, but would suggest we try to take a look at who's been there before. Uh, and maybe as Elizabeth mentioned, there's people that want to come off the committee um, and would do that to provide space for those who really need to be on the committee. Uh, maybe one RN employer represented versus two, maybe one OSHPOD represented versus two. But I would strongly suggest, number one, that health impact is up front and center um, as they are the most um, knowledgeable about our workforce uh, in California and that the other professional nursing organizations be allotted uh, one member as well. So hopefully we can move forward together with the principles that you're putting forward relative to a smaller number, but let's make sure we have all the right people. Thanks. Thank you, BJ. And just to um, respond to you real quick, it was not intentional to leave off health impact. Um, hopefully that you guys can see on the um, suggested structure under the professional nursing organization, it says EG, which is a um, example and not an inclusive list. The IE on the other one, IE is more of an inclusive list. And so um, I wanted to make sure that EG is just um, uh, serve as examples of that previous statement and it's not inclusive. So health impact could absolutely be included um, as part of the nursing, professional nursing organization representatives if that's the way that you guys choose. Great, great. Just wanna make sure people know how important health impact is. Have, they have been extremely helpful to us, um, particularly during COVID, so thank you. Lori, may I just point out that we had one BRN board member that said there really never was anybody on, from the board on there. So that should be eliminated. So, so that should be a really that. easy adjustment, Betty, um, to go from uh, one board member that should have been on there to none. <laughs> um, they report out to nurse practice committee, which is um, entirely made up of board members. So right. um, we would not need to have a board member present. 
There you go. Thank you. So there, don't you? As a proposal? Have yes, no in the yeah. current zero suggested process, we do have zero. Yeah. Oh. Would like to make a comment? One second, please. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Great, thank you so much, Safti Kim of the California Nurses Association. Jenny understands the board seeking to ensure NEWAC committee remains focused, especially with scarce, scarce staff time and resources, and perhaps the size of the committee could be scaled back, has been discussed today. Um, we would encourage the board, however, to maintain the combination of education and practice. CNA believes education can benefit from workforce, workforce input as has been discussed earlier, and it's important for education and practice to communicate and address common issues of nursing education and nursing workforce. That's one of the main reasons the legislature recommended during sunset review, not once but twice, that the board combine the nursing workforce advisory committee and the education issues with work group. So for all those reasons, we um, don't support the separation of education and practice. And we do also have concerns about the suggested change in the structure that would reduce union representation from three unions to two. So the three unions that were mentioned, CNA, SEIU, and UNAC represent nearly all of the unionized nursing workforce in California. And each brings important worker perspectives that help inform nursing education and nursing workforce issues. So we therefore oppose that section suggested reduction and would also note that the other three categories all get three representatives, but the UN unions um, should as well. And I just wanted to mention too quickly, Kathy Hughes uh, representing SEIU Nurse Alliance asked me to convey to you their support as well for these comments. She had to be in another meeting right now and so sends her regrets. Um, thanks for the time today, I appreciate it. Thank you. Board President Trujillo, there are no other public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. Thank you. So we'll take it to a vote. Um, do we need to restate the motion? Or does everybody understand it? Stand, you absolutely can. Um, if you wanted to consider bringing it up to an equal of three education, three employee, three workforce, three data, and three union um, with one public member, that is um, something that you can do to make an amendment um, to the motion if that's what you wanna choose. And it would just increase it to 16, which is still an amazing decrease um, from 29 down to 16. I think we should do that. I would yeah, that. that sounds good too. Okay, so we're amending the motion to um, Include one more union representative to make it three. Um, and then, so you made that motion, Dolores, and then Betty seconded. Is that correct? Well, Betty initially Second. made or Betty made the motion. You seconded it. Correct, yes. Dolores? Thank yeah. you. And then That's we have public comments so we can go to a vote. Okay. Dolores Trujillo votes yes. Betty? Woods, yes. Imelda? Susan? Susan, yes. Povita? Povita, yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Moving on in the agenda. Does anybody need like a five minute break or a 10 minute break? Five o'clock? We yeah. should be. Yeah. Yes, we are stopping in five o'clock and then we'll reconvene tomorrow at 9 a.m. for the second day of the board meeting. Just want to be mindful if anybody needs something to drink or bathroom break. But if not, we'll move on. All right, item 9.0. Report of the Education Licensing Committee. This is Hobita Dominguez, chairperson, and going to 9.1. Discussion and will, um, Do a quick interjection here, Dolores, as there has been some changes to this, and um, Reza is available as well to oh. um, comment as need be. Okay. Um, with the Education Licensing Committee meeting, there was a change that was made to the structure. 
Um, the plan is as discussed in the administrative committee by uh, both the president, the vice president, and then direction um, to me is to really work on changing our board meetings. And so the request was is to have the majority of the work done in the Le education licensing committee and then have those recommendations provided to the board with the hope that the board would accept the recommendations from the advisory from the um, education licensing committee. That can be done as a consent agenda and uh, with a simple motion that says, I make a motion to accept the recommendations from the education licensing committee meeting. That allows for our deans and directors and our nursing education consultants to have um, time freed up. Right now, what they've had to do in the past is attend and present an education licensing and then attend and present in board meeting just the month following with the identical information. Um, and so it became very repetitive in nature. So we're looking at streamlining that process. Um, any information, any items that uh, the committee was not able to make recommendations on would be brought forward to the full board. We did have, I believe, five items that the committee did not make recommendations on that will be presented for discussion here at um, the full board for consideration. And then just so that you guys are completely aware that if when you are making a motion and you say, I um, vote to accept the recommendations from the education license committee, you can say with the exception of and then choose an item that maybe you want more information on or you want to have a presentation on. Um, the people will be present and here to have that discussion with you if you choose to. What this allows for and what you guys see in our agenda immediately to following an education license committee meeting is discussion of regulatory updates, discussion of changes to education and discussions to changes of um, Maybe some uh, bringing the board kind of more current, um, hearing more um, education topics um, in a greater kind of discussion and open conversation kind of manner. Um, and that was um, definitely a suggestion that came out from our board's vice president, um, Dr. Mary Faggett. Um, I, I'm a little bummed that she's not here with us today to see kind of this come to fruition. So um, that's the first thing I want to um, point out. Additionally, there are some new materials that were added to our board um, meeting update um, for discussion going forward. And I wanted to kind of make sure that you guys have those and um, are aware that they are here for your review. And that is um, board approved enrollment increases from 2019 to 2021 and um, California current clinical hour requirements and supplemental materials that have been submitted in support of Arizona College and support of American Career College. These um, came in just over the last um, day or so. And so we wanted to make sure that those were added and updated to our website as we know that there will be some um, robust discussions when it comes to the um, five schools, I believe, that are prepared to present to request enrollment increases. I know that our board president read that um, article that talked about the nursing shortage or the lack of a nursing shortage. And then um, that will play into as well the um, discussions around 1426 that come in. And um, Rez, if you have anything to add, feel free to jump in. So I just wanted to uh, ensure that everyone's clear on the process. Um, previous, you know, in, in prior meetings, we would take one agenda item at a time, discuss it, um, and then go to public comment and then and vote on it. Uh, in order to kind of expedite that, there, there was a note on the agenda that um, explained what we've tried to do to, to expedite the, the items that can be taken by way of consent. So um, on the agenda, under agenda item 9.1, there are one, two, three, four, six items, 9.1.1 through 9.1.6. All of those are um, identified as consent agenda items. So uh, as Lori said, I think the ELC has made recommendations on those and the board 
um, needs to ratify the ELC's recommendations before they uh, become effective. But um, the, the way that you can go about that to kind of move things along a little bit more quickly is um, taking them by way of one single consent motion. And what I'm suggesting and what I tried to convey via the note under agenda item 9.1 is I, I would suggest if there are any specific agenda items between 9.1.1 and 9.1.6 that any board members want to pull out of the consent uh, motion, or you may also turn to pub the public and see if the public wishes to um, specifically address any one of those consent agenda items. Any of them that are pulled out of consent will be discussed separately and dealt with via a separate motion. Otherwise, anything that's you know between 9.1.1 and 0.6 um, would be part of a single consent motion to approve the ELC's recommendation. Uh, is that clear? So again, I think the most important thing, uh, I just want to ensure that um, even though we're trying to go about this in a slightly more expedited way, I just want to ensure that neither the board members nor members of the public are denied an opportunity to um, discuss uh, a specific agenda item or a specific school that either you wanted further clarification about or had comments about. So uh, again, I would suggest um, open it up to public comment to see if there's anyone that wants to, to pull any of those items from the consent and also board members as well indicate if you want to pull any of those. Otherwise, um, everything that remains between those um, ones I mentioned can be taken by way of one single motion. So if there's any questions on that, please let me know. Uh, if you have any concerns about that procedure, also please let me know. Additionally, on the agenda, you can see for each one of the agenda items what the ELC vote was and how each member of the ELC committee voted. And so you can see that um, it specifically states Bobita Dominguez, yes, Mary Fagan, West, yes, Susan Naranjo, yes. So you can see that each one of these agenda items did have a um, uh, vote and what the vote was by each of the members. Members. Do you have any comments or questions about any of the agenda items in located in 9.1 between 9.1.1 and 9.1.6? We can also take it to public comments. And then vote. Seeing that there's no questions or comments from the board. So real quick, Dolores, I would just like some clarification. Sure. My understanding was um, 9.1 through um, 9.1.6. 9.2.1. Oh, okay. And so then once that vote went through, we would start with 9.3.1. If you could see on 9.3, it says discussion and possible action regarding agenda items that do not have a recommendation from the education licensing committee meeting. That starts at 9.3. So it would be a vote to accept the um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 9.1 through 9.2.1. Zero. Uh, so Lori, the, the, all the items in 9.1 are labeled with consent at the end of the agenda item. And that's, that's, I thought how we were designating the items that would be part of that. I think, I mean, you, the ELC has made recommendations yeah. on. This is Barry M. McCarthy. I'm the education and licensing liaison um, to to the board. And I just want to clarify that, yes, what is on the agenda 9.1 and 
everything in 9.1 up to 9.6 were consent agenda items at the ELC. And those are, they were those, that's the vote for those. Starting at 9.2, these items, all of the 9.2s were presented and they were recommended for approval. They were not consent agenda items, but there was unanimous consent for recommendation to the board for approval of the ones in 9.2. Once we get to 9.3, that section are the, let's see, is there four or five? I think there's five, five items that when they went to the Education and Licensing Committee, there was no recommendation made. It was asked to be moved forward as is to the board. Does that help or do you have questions? I have one more thing to add to that. The ones that are designated as consent have always been consent and we've always accepted them as a consent agenda in ELC and in board. So if we only stuck with the ones that were designated as consent, there would be no change to the process that we had um, outlined that was already currently in process. Agreed. So the first 9.1, everything is consent that we've always had. 9.2 are things that the Education and Licensing Committee unanimously agreed that they would approve. And 9.3 are the items that were had no recommendation. They went forward as is for board decision. So I'm guessing we could take 9.1 and we could do that section. Then we could go do 9.2. Um, and again, I'm happy to, you know, explain that that was part of the, that was part of the recommendation by the committee unanimously to accept those. So why don't we do 9.1 to 9.2.10? And you could do that as well. And that would cover everything that is a consent agenda item and B everything that came with unanimous vote to approve from the education licensing committee. So, if you made a motion to accept those recommendations, we had a 2nd, we can go out to public comment and okay. um, hear if there's anything from the public that they would want to pull out of that. Pull out. Right. Okay. So I would like to make a motion to accept the consent agenda items from 9.1 to 9.2.10. I'll second that. Please. I'm sorry. Um, I was gonna, uh, Betty beat me to it. I was gonna second. All right. So BRN moderator, can we open it for public comment, please? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Board President Trujillo, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take this as take it to a vote. Dolores Trujillo votes yes. Povita? Povita votes yes. Betty? Woods, yes. Imelda? Susan? Susan, yes. Yeah. 
right. Motion carries. All right. Okay. Would you like me to continue? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Agenda item 9.3. Discussion and possible action regarding en agenda items that do not have a recommendation from the Education and Licensing Committee. <laughs> agenda item 9.3.1, discussion and possible action regarding the initial self-study for a new pre-licensure nursing program, Arizona College Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program. Arizona College is a new nursing program that has completed the initial continuing approval process. Arizona College is located in the Los Angeles area and their enrollment request is for 40 students three times a year for an annual enrollment of 120 students. The NEC data research for this region suggests that RN inflows to this area will exceed outflows of greater, by greater than 2,000. The um, NEC is available as well as the provost and they will answer your questions and speak for this, to this school. Board moderator, if you could please um, put uh, bring up uh, Patrick Robinson, Robinson, excuse me, Dr. Robinson, and Mary Jane Rosenblatt. Moderator, um, it is important to note that there was supplemental material added um, that does have letters of support for the board to consider um, for Arizona. Um, I did also want to let the board know that our research um, person from UCSF said that the report would not be available for us on um, the academia and workforce that is published until um, December. And so we will not have that updated information. And then I also wanted to call your attention I did create a list um, that is on the agenda on the materials that um, is named um, board approved enrollment increases from 2019 to 2020. I think that's very important information to um, have. And I don't know that we've ever had it in one place before. That information shows every single feasibility study that the board has accepted and the number of students that were projected with that feasibility study, each new program that has been approved and the students associated with it, each new campus location and the increased enrollments to that and the enrollment increases. And so what you can see in year 2021 from January Till today, I did not include any of the schools that are on the um, agenda today that you guys accepted um, or that are considering going forward. And you have added to the nursing education 999 new student slots. Um, that has been done through five feasibility studies that have been accepted to equal 264 students two new programs that have been approved to equal 210 students, two new campus locations that would equal 295 students, and five enrollment increases to equal 115 students. What you'll also see on that list is the locations that you guys have approved them. You've approved three, four in the Los Angeles area, one in Irvine, one in Santa Barbara, one in Rockland, one in, um, Sacramento, one in Bakersfield, one in Riverside, one in San Diego, one in Irwindale, one in Blythe, and one in Stanton. I made identical charts for what the board accomplished in 2020. Understand that 2020 was the year of COVID. That is when AB 2288 was put out so that students can progress and graduate because we were told that there were not enough clinical sites. And even through that, the board, the program directors and the NEC worked together to approve one feasibility study to add 120 students, one new program to add additional 60 students annually, one new campus location to add 120 students, and two enrollment increases to add 102 students. So throughout 2020, the year of COVID, 
the board added 402 new students. Now understand this is an annual increase. So those 402 students will be added to the almost 1,000 that has currently been approved by our board for this year. And then I did go pre-COVID so that you guys can compare and contrast pre and post-COVID. Pre-COVID was 2019. And you can see that altogether, the board opened up 1,094 new student slots annually for 2019. And you could see the locations through that. It was a very um, varied uh, areas with Vaselia, Sacramento, Stockton, Santa Ana, Crescent City, Alhambra, Irwindale, LA again, Bakersfield, San Diego, San Mateo, Fresno, and Costa Mesa. And so the board is doing an amazing job at um, getting new students out there, new enrollment opportunities for our students. So in 2019, you opened 1,094. In 2020, you opened 402 additional. And to date, you've opened 999 additional. And these will continue because they are on an annual basis. Those are very impressive numbers, very large numbers. So I believe we need to have a um, some kind of motion and then the program would like to speak. I would like to make a motion to hold this enrollment increase at this time and possibly bring it in front of the board. I would like to make a motion to just hold the enrollment increase at this time. Okay, so I just to clarify, this is a, a new, this program did a feasibility study and this is their initial self study. So this is a new program um, opening up. I just want to, it, that, it's still enrollment increase because there's still more people, but I just want to make sure that you know this is a new, a new program, not just an enrollment increase of a current program. And then by the language, are you defer making any action um, and you're bringing them back in front of the board at the beginning of the year after we have the published data or are you denying no, I would like to bring it back in front of the board with the data, with the data, but I would also like to hear what they have to say. So I'm not denying, I would like to bring it back in front of the board. And can we get a second? Second. Yes. So, so is it okay for the program to speak? Yep. Thank you. Dr. Robertson. Yeah. <clears throat> Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Patrick Robinson. I am the provost and senior vice president of academic affairs for Arizona College of Nursing. I appreciate the opportunity to present uh, our self-study to you this evening. It's the final stage in our approval process after having our feasibility study approved in November of last year and our site visit completed in August of our fully built and equipped campus. Following the Education and Licensing Committee, we were allowed to amend our executive summary. In our executive summary on page one, we believe we, we have reiterated the data that led to our approval of the feasibility study and added additional um, data from uh, evidence for the need for a program in the Inland Empire area. And specifically the uh, BRN School Survey Interactive Dashboard currently states that there are 39,000 qualified applicants who are denied admission throughout the state. 
in the 19 to 20 reporting cycle, nearly 1,500 of those were denied applicants in the Inland Empire region. And the 2020 data by Blash and Spetz indicates that 4,200 qualified applicants may not be granted admission in the San Bernardino and um, Riverside counties. In addition to this, we have secured um, evidence and letters of support from State Senator Levi of the 20th State Senate District attesting to the need for additional RNs in her district. That letter um, has uh, been provided for evidence. Mayor Paul Leon, mayor of the city of Ontario, similarly attesting to the need. County Supervisor Hagman of the 4th District of San Bernardino County, additionally attesting to the need and the support for our program, as well as employers in the Ontario San Bernardino County area. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Rosenblatt, the Nursing Education Consultant. Thank you so much, Dr. Robinson. And um, just to clarify that this school is a BSN course located um, in Ontario, which serves the Inland Empire. So, as I understand it, we have accepted the feasibility report for Ontario only, correct? In November of yeah. 2020. Yeah. Yes, to be clear, Dolores, in the the data that I presented on that chart for 2020, Arizona College, it says feasibility, and that's part of the 120 students that um, the board is working forward to accepting. So um, if you were to make the motion, change the motion today or have the motion, well, the motion that's up right now would have to fail or you can make the motion to amend, um, then that, if you motion, if you accept the self-study, that allows them to start enrollment of that projected 120 that was on the feasibility study. And Dr. Robinson, or maybe your director of nursing can answer this. You have secured clinical space for this 120 students? Yes, we have submitted all. Our um, program director, unfortunately, had a death in the family late last night, which is why I am here um, presenting on um, her behalf. Yes, we have submitted all the um, required EDP um, forms uh, that's, that uh, certify we have all the needed clinical sites for the requested enrollment in all specialties. This is Mary Jane. One of the things addressed um, at ELC was the creativity involved uh, by this program director. There has been an agreement already um, ready to go with corrections in Chino. Can you give Hi, us an this idea of the, creativity yeah. that you're talking about? Specific Mary Jane, I don't know if they know what that means to have a, a, oh, sure, a affiliation sure. with corrections. We do have a um, our programs that allow employees of corrections that are LVNs to attend an RN program, for example, at Riverside City College. So it is unusual to see um, a nursing program be able to have their clinical experience in corrections. That's what I meant. Which means in in, a, in prisons, in correctional facilities with inmates. In state prisons, yes. yes. Uh, she knows an interesting setting in that there's a men's prison and there's also a separate women's prison. Yes, it's our belief that that is an optimal way to um, drive experiences with students in terms of developing competencies around promoting health equity which is an imperative right now as we begin to embrace the uh, future of nursing report 2020 through uh, 2030. 
We're very pleased with that uh, partnership. But is there clinical time in an actual acute care hospital? Yes, there are yes. adequate agreements already in place that have been approved. Um, and that was initiated before the feasibility that was submitted. Um, and the program director has stayed in touch with these clinical sites to assure when um, students start. The, the plan would be in May of next year that they will have uh, clinical capabilities. And um, a thought around this is that it's a four year, it's a BSN course. Mm -hmm. So we're looking out into the future as well, but they do have those um, agreements in place. Hi, this is Imelda. If I may ask Marianne, I I'm not seeing what the issue is here. Um, why we're not accepting the self study. I mean, why man, I'm willing to amend my motion and accept it. Thank you. Susan, I think from the. Education and licensing committee, the reason why we had deferred this to the board and not the consent agenda item was because there was missing. Data, or, um, and I'm trying to remember exactly what Mary Fagan had pointed out. Um, and I think Lori had alluded to it. I don't necessarily think that. We need it for to approve it today, but I just wanted to confirm Lori was that the same data that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, Dr. Fagan was really wanting to wait for the data that's collected through Joanne Spets UCSF and have that reported out. Um, however, there were some other data points that um, were pointed out that um, they wanted to collect, and I believe that those were given to us in the updated executive um, summary that is in our materials. So those those materials are different from um, the materials that were presented to ELC and does cover some of those concerns that were brought up. And so, um, with a, a full um, quorum for the board here, there are more people to weigh in, more people that can ask questions um, and get a bigger picture. And a vote can absolutely be made today if that's what you guys choose to do. I would support an amended. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I would like to amend my motion to accept startup of a new program in Ontario. Sorry. This is an second. Who seconds? Would anybody like to second? Oh, Susan. Yeah. All right. The uh, second already. Dolores and Jovita. So do I need I made an amendment. Do we still need if, yeah, to... it's not a big deal, but if you're technically just amending the motion and yeah. Jovita agrees to second the amended motion then. Okay. Um I, I the only question I have is that um once um that report comes that Dr. Fagan um was um requesting, um would that would probably not change our our vote, correct, Dolores? No, it would probably not. Today, it can't change your vote today. If you wanted to wait for data, you'd have to move. You'd have to move it to into future meeting. Well, maybe I, I, um, maybe I stated it wrong. I didn't mean to um, say that. What I'm saying is that once we take the vote and then um, we look at the data, um, I guess it would be a learning, a learning curve in that sense. That if if it would change our thoughts of how we would have voted. That's the only thing I was um, thinking about. Jovita, um, the regional data that um, should come out of this will be able to differentiate the numbers better. Right now, Ontario falls within the greater LA area. Um, mm -hmm. And that data that is um, presented is based on the greater LA area because Ontario is about 40 miles from LA. Um, knowing that um, the data should um, differentiate that better into different regions, and they're talking specifically about Ontario and then focusing on the Inland Valley, I, I would presume that that data would be there to support the motion that you make today. 
Um, just in a side note, though, the board can make a motion today and they can actually choose to um, change that by having the school come back um, in the future and the board reser reserves the right to increase enrollment, maintain enrollments or decrease en enrollments based on um, resources. Those resources include clinicals. So if at any point we were to get um, reports back after this program opens up that um, there is clinical impaction in Ontario, um, you as a board could bring that back in front and make a motion to decrease enrollments or um, halt enrollments. And so those are normal things that the board has always had the power to do. We've had those discussions with ELAC where they halted a semester of enrollments. Um, we've had that discussion where I believe Charles Drew um, had a decrease in enrollments temporarily. And so um, and a motion that's made today is for right now. Um, the board has the right to adjust enrollments going forward on any of their camp, any of their programs. Thank you, Lori. Um, it makes it a little more clear. It's just that in my mind, I feel like we're really inundating all, you know, LA with a lot of students. But if it's the if it it's in the outskirts of LA, I guess like um, like the presenter had said, it's not going to impact. And since he's using um uh california prisons i mean that offloads the acute care but i would definitely and i'm glad that dolores asked if they were going to be um going to acute care because i think that that would give the students a contrast of the population Absolutely. because we do see the the prison you know the um uh, inmates um in in our acute care facility so it would mm -hmm. give them a good contrast from one mm -hmm to the other. So we have an amended motion on the floor with a first and a second. Um, we do need to go out to public comment. And then once we come back from public comment, um, go to a vote. And then at that point, we will have to adjourn and then um, reconvene tomorrow at 9 a.m. for any additional agenda items on our board meeting. Okay, we are in moderator. Can you please open it up for public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box. I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired. And we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment. Saeed Jeffrey would like to make a comment. One second, please. Go ahead. Beyond members, my name is Saya Jeffrey. Thank you for this opportunity to speak in support of ACC or you know uh, American Career College's application to serve ADN students in Ontario. I live in the Inland Empire in the city of Riverside. In June, I will be a graduate of the ACC's Ontario LVN program. I am very proud of this uh, uh, upcoming uh, accomplishment, but there is no reason other than a lack of enrollment opportunities that I should not be graduating with my ADN. In many ways, my life has been the American dream. I immigrated with my family from Pakistan when I was a teenager and during school, excelled in science and was always interested in healthcare. After graduating, I attended my local community college and then transferred to Cal State San Bernardino. Um, however, like many other persons, pursuing the American dream, I fell upon circumstances that necessitated dropping out of college. I then had a career path in sales and finance that was interesting, had mobility and supported my family, but I realized that my calling was in nursing. So I went back to community college and fulfilled my um, prerequisite for the ADN program. 
I had no idea how long the wait list uh, were for any ADN program, either public or private in the Inland Empire. As a provider for my family, I could not wait indefinitely with no guarantees. I found the ACC and was impressed with their outcomes. I considered driving the two hours from home to the ACC Los Angeles campus, but it was too far. Instead, I chose the LVN program as a first step. As you know, this position does not earn the same as RN, and that extra income will be important for my family. So I'm very hopeful that the ACC Ontario campus will open and I can start on the degree um, uh, after I graduate. Um, I know that I can be a great reg registered nurse and give back to the diverse community of the Inland Empire. I speak four languages other than English, Urdu, Hindi, Punjabi, and somewhat Arabic. These are languages that often do not have translator or nurses that are culturally competent and readily available to assist patients. So please support the ACC ADN program and help students like me have the opportunity to realize our dreams. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Board President Trahelia, there are no other public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, thank you. All right, with the amended motion on the floor in a second, we'll take it to a vote. Dolores Trujillo votes yes. Jovita Dominguez? Jovita votes yes. Thank you. Elizabeth Woods? Thank you. Imelda? Imelda votes yes. And Susan? All right, motion carries. And I think at this point, we're going to adjourn. So thank you. Tomorrow uh, at 9 a.m., we will reconvene with agenda item 9.3.2. Correct. All right, everyone have a good evening and see you tomorrow morning.